I want to welcome you guys to another episode of Trash Can Talk Podcast. This is the most lucky number because it's my favorite number. This is episode 11. Woo! We've made it thus far. <laughs> and then it's like crazy, actually. So, like, we got some day ones that they don't watch this, but they listen. Mm-hmm. So, they've gone on the journey mm-hmm. of like this first episode got released. And uh, it was with Mike D. And um, we were supposed to get picked up by the, you know about this. So, like, a bigger company tried to pick us up. Mm-hmm which we won't even give them any credit of naming them. Okay. To put it out. And then they're like, oh, we're going to give you this much to do episodes. Mm -hmm. And then they just put me off. Like, oh, don't worry. Do them, you know, next week. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So, like, the first episode came out in a month or, like, two months. You know, most of the people, they got the first episode and they're like, dude, what the heck? So we're on episode 11, and we're, we're steadily, like, every two weeks, an episode's coming out. Show your tattoo. I mean, where is it? This Not side? Not that side. The other one. All right, so you, editing, make sure to zoom up right here. 11-11. Right. So we're on the 11th episode. And let's see. So, okay, no, no. So I think so far you will be the most OG friend that I've had on the episode. It's be- yeah, it's between you and Jeremy, but I think Jeremy was later. So, um, me and Christy met at a gas station. <laughs> I just got out of LA County Jail, and I was wearing a wife beater and some pants and maybe some shoes without laces mm-hmm. is where we got to. And uh, Christy, I mean, I, so I was going to go to my aunt's house, but I was homeless at the time. He had a newspaper over his head, and it was raining. Right. So it wasn't, you know, I wasn't a vision for you at that point. No. Actually, too, Christy was saying that these shorts, these are shorts, too. So if you're watching, I'm putting my hands <laughs> in the pocket. She says that they look like boxers. I said they're inappropriate. These are shorts, and uh, yeah, so I'm wearing shorts, Christy's here. Um, it's flower themed. It's been such a long journey. Yes, it has. How you know, could, that was, like, what, 12 years ago, 11 years ago? Right. I was newly sober when I picked you up. Oh my God, only a newly sober person would do that. I was newly sober, and I, was, I had my car, I don't even know what car I had. It was like an SUV. Oh, one of them, Explore, yeah. Escape, one of them. Oh, and she had an old man in the car that she picked up from a meeting. <laughs> Some other guy. <laughs> right. Always full of people. And, um, okay, so that's probably why I felt comfortable picking you up. But I don't think you knew that guy either. <laughs> probably not. Right, yeah, see. Was it the guy that tattooed my leg and jacked it up? Gray hair. Yeah, Older so man. He, he was, was 75, and he just got out of jail, and they let him go on $200, and what happened was they put him in jail for, like, almost 20 years, and then they're like, sorry, wow. you made a mistake, you're, you're free. Don't get me started on the judicial system. <laughs> and it was really bad. I, that was a long, long time. I mean, that was a long time ago. I yeah. couldn't, I mean... I would love if, if he was still alive to see, but his name was, I think his name was William. I didn't even, there's no way I'd remember. I know, um, but yeah, he had um, a crazy story, but he told me, I said, what can you do? What do you want to do? And he's like, I only know how to tattoo. And I'm like, oh. I said, Let's, do you have a tattoo machine? And he's like, no. I'm like, how about we go buy you one? So I bought him a tattoo machine and all the ink. And I let him practice all over my body. So I have a whole bunch of jacked up tattoos I need to get fixed. Wow. Um, and that was a long time ago. Okay, so um, he was there. And I asked him, Brandon, I, I looked at him. I, I remember rolling down the window, right? And I said, what's wrong? And you said, I'm tired of being tired. And I'm like, get in. And you're, and you're hungry. You were right. hungry. So then we went and got, you said Boston Market? I don't remember. What it, was it was KFC, I think. Was it KFC? I'm pretty sure, because it was like Burbank, so it was probably that like KFC. Boston Market. Or it was maybe, one of the two. But, or maybe Kenny Roger Roasters. Okay. 
That was over there too, huh? Mm -hmm. Was it, were those open late? Any of my Burbank people that are watching, <laughs> we're, we're going back in time. I mean, everyone knows Boston Market, but the Kenny Rogers Roasters. Mm, that's you not, love that place. That's not everywhere. And that no. place was good. Where we were at, though, we were closer to the uh, um, Boston Market because there was one in Toluca Lake. Right. Remember as yeah, you yeah. go near past Priscilla's? I feel like, so, this is going back way old school, but. I know. Do you remember the Egghead? It's in Burbank. This is very, very old school Egghead. Burbank. La near Larry's? It's, uh, I, forget, I think Party City was there uh -huh. last. Okay. And then that KFC was across the street. Yes. I almost feel like that was the spot, but I could be like dead ass wrong. Okay. I'm just trying to think Burbank, and I remember it's chicken and mashed potatoes. Because if Corner Cottage was open, we would have gone there. Yeah, for sure. That was probably open, we just didn't go. Isn't Corner, I mean. No, they're not open. They're only open in the morning for breakfast burritos. Burbank people are loving this right now. So Corner Cottage is the best breakfast burrito in the whole world. Wow. Yes. So that's the thing is, um, I want to apologize to anybody watching from San Diego, but uh, Chrissy's not from here. And we just, so, I mean, I'm a, I'm a L.A. San Diego person since I'm here in San Diego and now. And I'm just here. We took a hit. They're Why? saying that this is the seventh or eighth best taco in the world. People are pissed. <laughs> but San Diego does have the best burritos. The best tacos, okay. in my opinion, hands down, are in Tijuana. Okay. I'll fight you. But breakfast burrito. You're in for a treat living here. Because okay. the thing is, you're gonna go everywhere and it's gonna be that good. I know what you're saying. In Burbank, there's oh. no one else. No. But one in else. San Diego, you're about to be mind blown. So now, uh, Christy is transplanting to San Diego. Woo! So. So excited. Um, if there's any businesses that are looking to do any brand deals or <laughs> promotion advertising. We're, you know, hit me up, you know, we'll talk. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you can hit up Christy. She has her Instagram. And uh, what made you decide to move to the greatest city in the world? It was all an accident. No, <laughs> it's no divine intervention, I call it. Um, as you may know, I was in New York for a while. Right. What were you doing there? I... I had a fiance, and um, after I finished decorating his house about two weeks later, he's like, I'm done. And I was so working on myself at that moment. I was like grounding myself every day, praying, meditating, because I was in search of finding my own self, and I was volunteering in so many different places because I was trying to feel better, right? you know, be better, and I was unhappy, obviously. And when he said, I'm done. I was like, okay. I was like, okay with it. It was right. like weird. Cause usually I would be like, no, oh my God. And I was, I guess I was done. I think I was done a year ago, over a year ago. And, um, I went to Vegas because my whole family moved there. My son and his wife, my daughter and her fiance, my parents are there. My sister and her kids, my nephews, my nieces, like everyone's there. So I thought, Vegas. Right. And I got there and I was I was not happy. I went on several interviews. People looked at me like an entertainer. I was just like I there's not a it's not it wasn't me. Right. And it was just it's just not me. So my friend said, "Hey girlfriend, why don't you come over for vacation just for a week?" And I was like, "Yeah, I can do that. I'll pack a bag and then I can, you know, see my friends and stuff yeah. like that." So I went she lives near Temecula. Um, and Felbrook. Right. And um, she has an extra room. So I went there and I haven't left. It's been two and a half months. It's a good place to land. You know what so I mean? So that's why I told you I'm going to be looking for a place out here in Oceanside. Right. I like Carlsbad today. I was there at Car Carlsbad that today and it's such a cute town. But I don't know. I love Oceanside too. So, so Oceanside is like... Chill, right? Well, here's the thing. So... I look at it like this is if you're going to move, see, you just came from New York and then you went Vegas. 
I think anything, any, anywhere you, any place you came to here would be, this is like ideal. Like all the spots are good here. Yeah. But I would say like, if you were like an LA person and you're like, where should I move? It's Oceanside now. Okay. Oceanside is like this, it's like an up and coming. I mean, so Oceanside. And it's still closer to LA where it's not like yeah, damn no, far. No, it is. Because if it, you that, go more makes, south. Uh, San Diego, that's another hour. I'm telling you, just jumping. I don't know what it is about jumping, even comparatively to Carlsbad, Encinitas. Uh -huh. Like, getting on an Oceanside and going to L.A., to me, feels like that. Uh -huh. Like, I, it just feels like a blink of an eye. Like, you're there. Yeah, I have friends in, in, in Encinitas. Anything and further? Friends, right. yeah, all over the place. But It, for some reason, feels like an extra... Well, after 3 o'clock, it's like gridlock out here. It's crazy. In San Diego? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's right in that spot, too. Oceanside, yeah, right the there. Carlsbad, mm -hmm. yeah, it's gridlocked. That's a new thing. That's like a new, so like I moved back here COVID, so I didn't really, like when everyone's like, oh, San Diego traffic, it's changed. I was like, there, it was COVID, so there's no one out. Right. Like I, I went out every single day on COVID. I just walked or jogged or this. I walked everywhere too. Yeah, so it's I was like, I was out day, every yeah. day. I actually didn't notice any... I didn't skip a beat during COVID. I was like doing things oh, nonstop. Did. You did? Oh, well, I just lost a baby. Right. So I like tuckered in and I did lots of therapy and I just let it, you know, let the natural loss, feeling of loss go through the, all the, the feeling of loss. Like right. the anger, the sadness, the remorse like and it was good for me and I did a lot of writing so it was very therapeutic see that it's so I'm our kids would have been so close to in age too. right that's sad it's very sad um I had a baby that died after two weeks so and sh she was born right before what well, she was born right when COVID hit and so it was insane yeah what okay because i so i mean i don't know what that's like but i hit i had my one of my good friends pass away um then my grandmother yeah and my grandmother was always the only person there for me so like not the only i mean there's been you my aunt kathleen mm. but like in a real in the real sense of like from a little baby kid to like where do you feel safe it was with her to the adult where do you feel safe with her and I know that, like, you know, I I wasn't, like, a big, being, like, being, doing, like, in the, like, you know, what we do with our sobriety, mm -hmm. you kind of see a lot of people come and go. Yeah. And I'm not going to say that I was, like, desensitized to it, because obviously I wasn't, like, losing those people, a lot of people that were close to mm -hmm. me in this, like, I'd say, like, a six to nine month range, I went through a lot of, like, See, I think what it was, too, is that since we are in, you know, the sobriety spectrum and you see a lot of people come and go, um, I was slightly desensitized to it. I don't know if it's that. I think we're giving tools in the, our 12-step program to go through anything. Right. And I was able to go through my daughter passing away on my chest without picking up. Right. That's insane. So to me, I mean that I I agree. So this I uh, I remember th always thinking, previous to my grandma passing away, what would I do if she did? Yeah. And when I was using, I used to always say, that's the day I'm killing myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tried a bunch of other times before she passed away, but I was like, if that happens, I'm done. And then right. uh, she started like her memory started going, which was like really hard for me. Because then I was like, I remember this one time I drove, like right before COVID. I didn't even know COVID, like the lockdown was going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I got let go from my work doing event industry jobs because they're like, hey, there's this virus and we're mm -hmm. not doing shows. And that was before, that was months before it hit the news. So I was already kind of like going crazy because I'm mm -hmm. like, wow, I just like spent my whole life in this career mm -hmm. and it's done. But people are still living every day and working. And then boom, like, but I drove down there and I went to see my grandma. She, I brought Malachi to show her and she, you know, she still remembered that. So I was like, 
I was like, you know, this is probably going to be the last. I, and it, I didn't know we were going to lock down for like over a, a year. year. And then her being locked down in the, because it's senior, so they locked them down even and longer. they all caught it. Right. Did she pass from COVID? It, so, no, she didn't. But, um, you know, it was the, I, I, I was unequipped. I was equipped with the fact that I wasn't going to use, yeah. but I was really unequipped with the tools to deal with that feeling. I, it was, it was really weird. Cause, and I was, I, I'd like to, you know, your take on that. Cause yours is a lot, like, I was just like, I, you know, like I got to this point around there where I used to be like, Feelings are feelings, but they're not facts. Like they teach you kind of in the program. Mm -hmm. Like, oh yeah, that's a feeling, like sit through it. It's gonna change. Yeah, it's gonna change. It always changes. But I was, I had gotten to the point when I was like, okay, I'm three months. When is this changing? It takes a while. It did, it took a while. Loss is horrible. And you go through so many waves. Right. Mm -hmm. See, I had to go to counseling over to school. I had to go to counseling too. Yeah, and now normal. I have a freaking psych, a diagnosis, and it makes it, I mean, the the coolest thing to me about the counseling was like, you know, the guy's like, you are grieving. You are grieving. And he's like, it's okay to go through grief. And it was to nice. To go through grief is horrible, though. It's, it is horrible. It's horrible. It's Cause I, I, I tell you, Chrissy, I ne- like, I've never gone through it. Me and neither. it took like, it took, so I lose, I lose my friend, Marty, rest in peace. A lot of people that watch him know, and uh, a lot of people know him that watch this, but Marty passes away, and Marty's just one of those guys too. He, he's just always been there, constant, like, yeah. no matter what. This guy's taking my calls when I'm high, telling him the police are about to bust through my, <laughs> and he's talking me through it, to I got sober, and he's buying me lunch, breakfast, dinner, mm-hmm. whatever, you know what I mean, taking me to all the places with him, driving me around in his expensive cars, taking me to his cool places. And, uh, and then he passed away, and I was like, it's crazy because Marty was in this area when he was doing his chemo, and I would owed a nine-step amends to Marty. I basically, would, you know, I kept taking Maybe. money, I kept taking money from him, like, oh, okay. I'm going to pay you back, I'm going to pay you back. And, and really in my head, I never, you know, I, this is when I was like, when I used to think, like, if you had a car and a, an apartment and food in your refrigerator, in my mind, I was like, you're rich. So Marty had everything you could imagine. So I always was like, well, he has all of it. He should give it to me, and it shouldn't matter. And he did, and he never asked me to pay him back, but it was on my ninth step. So I was like, hey, Marty, like, you know, I always just like took from you and I was like, I think I owe you about this much money and how can I make it right? And he was, you know, he was going through chemo at the time. He couldn't eat or taste anything. He's like, it looks like you owe me this many lunches. He's like, you want to go to lunch right now on you? And I was like, hell yeah. I picked him up in my car, drove him. And, you know, it's like one, of, and, and that's too with that nine step amends process, like yeah. all those things. Cause like now, like that he's passed too. I didn't, he didn't pass with that. You know what I mean? And I got to make it, but him and then another, you know, uh, this guy, Chris from NoHo. And then my grandma ultimately at the end. And it it was like, it was just a real, like it took me a while of, of like weeks of the guy telling me like, you are grieving. And I'm like, no, I'm not. There's just something wrong. Right. You know what I mean? And he's like, no. Did you sleep a lot? Uh, it, it was both. So there was a good, okay. Uh, originally, a ton of sleeping. That's, the, that's what happened with me. In the, in the Chris one. And the, so the thing about Chris that was hard on me was um, Chris was my, he was answering a lot of questions I had about the point of sobriety that I was at. Because he came from that same, like, he lost it all, so he had it all. He had the world. And uh, just a lot of things, like, I mean, like, um, I didn't understand any, what the importance of marriage was. And he, like, explained it to me. And, uh, you know, just, like, a lot of this stuff, like, relationship with kids, some business stuff, you know. And, I mean, just a lot of good, deep conversations and 
a lot of like pointing me to this and this and this to draw my own conclusion to things. Mm -hmm. So to like lose that person where you're like, I know he went through what I went through and I know he got to where I'm at. So like, you know, I trust. That's when the, a lot of sleeping. Cause I didn't have, I didn't have answers. And it, it, it was like, I would go upstairs and lay down I wasn't yeah. doing a lot. I was only really um, volunteering at Humanity Showers. And Netflix, right? Well, just pretty much only. Doing that, watching TV, sleeping. That's what I did. Not, I did a lot of sleep. That's the crazy thing. I wouldn't even watch things. Oh, you were just staring into the wall. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I did a lot of that, See, too. No, I, didn't, I didn't tell a lot of people, too, that I did that. No, I did, I did a lot. I lost... Honestly, I think I lost two months. I don't remember the too, too much of two months after she passed. Right. I really don't. See, that was like me. It, like my memory is gone. Like wiped it out. Isn't that crazy? No, I I totally. It's, I get it because my my grieving process was like I was doing things too, and I just I don't remember. You were just like on autopilot. Yeah, and there was like I had no schedule. It's, it's called flight or fight. Right. Your cortisone level just. Yeah, and I would just get up and do these things, but like there was no rhyme or reason to what I was doing. Yeah. There was no schedule. The only thing that saved me was getting up and showing up to the showers. Cause it was like I. It's like I trained my feet. Like, you know, with the AA meeting and all that stuff, like, to go and do Be that. service. And it's funny because, like, me and Jordan just had lunch right before this, and we were talking about some people that just give back to only make themselves feel better. You know what I mean? And I'm, like, in that, you know what I mean? I'm in that, like, teeter. Like, it's in us. Like, me and you know each other. Yeah. Like, we're never, ever going to probably stop giving back. Nope. Like because if, that's that's just when you give when we're in your, when you're in service, you're just a better human being. And I think that with you, it goes even deeper. To it's a, just an instinct. It is. Because you don't meet a lot of people that just like, like okay, prime example, at like one time walking me up the stairs, like making sure I go to rehab. It's like. I was slumped over your shoulder. I was so high. Like, I, I did, I mean, that day I was like, I want to do all that I can. I Hopefully remember, I, can. I asked you, I'm like, what did you do? And you're like, everything. I'm like, I don't want to know. How about this? Don't die. Right. Because you're not supposed to have anything in your system for three days. But I want you in this rehab because I know the person, Vernie. And so, um, yeah. yeah. Sorry, Vernie, if you're watching. Is his name Fernie, right? He, I, I don't know if he watches. Yeah, <laughs> Fernie. I don't know Hi, if he, Bernie. Yeah, he might actually because he does follow Shit. me. So he might watch. <laughs> no, shout out. Big ups to Fernie. Fernie Yay. is awesome. Shout out to Fernie because he, he does saved, like Brazilian he save your life. now. He did, yeah. I mean, it was definitely. Yeah, I messaged him after we talked about him last time. I was like, what was that guy's name? And you're like, Fernie. I'm like, oh, yeah. Right. And then, I mean, even, and then this time too. So this now it's been five years ago mm -hmm. or maybe four no probably about five because right when I got out went to I was homeless for a little while stayed sober gone to sober living and then boom you got me like the shorts the underwear I mean every fucking thing you know what I mean it's like I don't remember I know I got you a care you box you took me boxes. to Target <laughs> and you let me buy whatever I wanted <laughs> and being like the prick that I am because you're like no go ahead get more do you need this do you need and I'm just I, I grab you know what I mean like I got everything. Like I had the shorts, the boxes, toiletry. You know, like this time, this one time. I mean, when I first got there, we bought like everything. And it's like you don't fucking meet people. You know what I mean? Like it. What? And like you said, like you don't even remember because, in my opinion, it was just an instinct. Yeah. You're like this guy literally has one Nothing. pair of sweatpants yeah. and the shirt he's wearing. And well, I always try to put myself in people's shoes, and what. I would need right. and hope that someone would help me if I needed it. I think if the world all thought that way, the same thought process, it would be such a better place. I mean, yeah. I mean, come on. It, it would, it would, it's like almost, I mean, all, 
See, the thing that I think, too, what happened during COVID is, so there's a lot of, like, heads in a screen interactions. You know what I mean? Like, Zoom. Oh, yeah, a yeah. Bunch of heads on a I'm screen. I'm still doing that. What are you talking about? Oh, I know. Me, too. All the time. See, and listen, this is what I tell And stuff. I always wear comfortable pants. Right. <laughs> and I'm here. Well, no, look, this is what I always tell my clients. So everyone's like, I could just do it Zoom, or I could do that via email, uh -huh. or I could do this, or I could drop this off, or I could mail this in. And I'm like, you could do that. Uh -huh. But I was like, what you become is you're either the piece of paper. Uh -huh. So this, instead of me with Brandon O'Connell, if I go drop off or mail an application or mail something in, then this piece of paper becomes Brandon and Connell. Black and white, whatever my handwriting may look like. And that's all they know. Yep. So the same thing. With Zoom, it's a little more personable. Yes, it is. But most people that I know Zoom with their camera off. Most people do. Not the initial time, though. A lot of people with, that I come in contact with initial time. The initial time, time? Yeah. No. You should never do that if you're watching. It's bad. Right. Then because then you don't really... know if you're being catfished or or uh, scammed or whatever you call it. But also, too, even it just takes, it makes it less personable. So, like, yeah. you know, my opinion is, like, in my opinion, the best is always to go meet people. You know what I mean? And I know that it's not everyone. Well, and it's not always conducive with all these stupid pandemic Oh yeah, or outbreaks it's, it's, or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Have. No, it, it's like I don't even watch news anymore. I don't even know what's going on in this. Never. World. I don't. I don't even know. I might look at current events like every once in a while. I'm like, oh, 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 no, no, no. Right. No. It's scary. No, I know. I this, just rather so, live in my little bubble and I'm happy. But e even so, like me too. It's like okay, maybe I'm like in this little bubble, but I'm so out in our community exactly. that I'm like. All this stuff sounds crazy and scary, but like, it's kind of not the reality. You know what I mean? Like some of this is real. Some of these things are really happening, but like there's truth to some of the stuff about like, and it's, it's so weird because you have to at your own discretion and like decide what's fact or fiction. But like, I mean, the news is not the reality. No, and I also feel like if you just are, if we're working in, we're working hard in our community. It helps other communities. So it's like a, it's like a domino. Right. Yeah. You know. Hold on one sec. I'm gonna check. Freaking battery. I mean, even to think about it too. You would know this. Reality TV is not even real. <laughs> it's edited. It's not real. Right. It's not real. You you've been on the I've show. I've been on it. Yeah. It's 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 horrible. And it's just like I mean that is the craziest thing too. So that's like that's the the craziest thing to me too. And and this I I feel like reality TV was like the pretense like the precursor to like how social media would work. Cause it's like true. Like in reality TV, it's like you, they, like you. They made me get an Instagram. I didn't have Instagram before the show. And they're like, you only have Facebook? I'm like, I don't even go on Facebook. They're like, you have to do Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all these. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> I, oh they made God. me do it all. Did someone manage it at first for you? I, I yeah, but then I took, I took it back over because it was costing me too much money. I, and they weren't doing it. I was still doing it. I was fixing their work because I'm right. such a perfectionist. Yeah. And I was like, this is stupid. So. I, uh, I don't even let, like if someone has me do something, I can't, they can't micromanage it. Mm -mm. I have to be full throttle, take it. Yep. But I mean, how, so you guys did nine seasons. So yeah, eight, eight in the United States, one in, in Puerto Rico. A whole season was in Puerto Rico? Mm -hmm. That was something different or in the nine seasons of it that was, same show? You know, it was the, it was the, it was to like mend my relationship with Todd, which was a bullshit. You were made up? No. We faked it. It was all a fake, 
We lived on separate floors. We didn't even have sex. It was a sexless marriage. It was wow. bullshit, that marriage. I tried to get it annulled. And in California, it's like impossible to get something annulled. Can you imagine not having sex for like five years? It fucking sucked. Oh my God. I died. What did all the other people on the show do? Uh, I don't know. Were they having sex? Probably. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not like asking. You can't. Person. You couldn't hear in their rooms or anything? Or? We didn't sleep in the same house. Ding dong. Did you ever watch it? No. <laughs> so they followed us. I really thought it was. So a, I know. I think I came to one episode. Was yes. like, Was it a softball game you guys did or something? We did. We did all kinds of shit. And you went to the fashion show. The fashion your wife show? did, or your go, whatever she was. Fiance. Fiance. She came to the fashion show and she saved the day because remember, I was going to have like a makeup crew in this and they bounced and I was like, fuck, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have like all this stuff. And you, yeah. she came in and saved the day. Like, saved the day. And then I went to uh, the sober birthday party episode. Me. Oh, in the jungle. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. It, wasn't it like a treehouse or something? Yes, or? but it was in to, um, Topanga Canyon. Yeah. Oh, uh, and it was like very, there was trees and it was Chica, green. Yes. Yoga, and they, sound healing. Sound healing. Right. And we and you're like, what is this bullshit? And I'm like, just, can you just smile? Right. <laughs> uh, Bobby Sepulveda that, was I that I think that episode? was my five year, was it my five year? I think I was five years, six years. Five years, good year. Five. Now I'm 12. Almost, I'll be 13 in January. Wow. Time flies. So let me think. So 13. So wait, that time that you picked me up, did you did you stay sober from then all the way to now? Yeah. No. Yeah. That was 13 years ago? That was like 11, 10, 11, 12. I don't maybe. know. I was, maybe it was, a, maybe I was just sober. I think I was. I don't think, I think if I was like two years in, I wouldn't pick you up. Like you said, newbies right. do weird stuff. They do. So wait, you don't talk to anyone from the show anymore or you do? Um, it's like, hey, how are, like once in a while. Did it just, did it just like, like you started the show and you guys maybe had some sort of friendship and then by the end it ruined everything for everyone? I just, I am not in that frame of mind. Um, okay, so I knew Tanya. She's the black one. Right. Since I was eight, like in Little People of America. I knew Tara. We partied a few times, like back in the day. Right. And um, She's really good at social media. I don't give a fuck. Very good. I don't like anybody. I do like people. Just not them. They tortured me for like eight years, so I just... I just, I don't need to be around that toxicity. Right. So I always, people loved living up her ass. And I was always like, I'm not kissing anybody's ass. And she didn't like it. I mean, did she they? she lied. She always said like, oh, I saw her drinking. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, right. Do you hate that? I too? was like, I never said drinking. I'm so, I'm stone sober. It's like, you see me drinking, I'll fuck all you up. If I drink one drink, this, this. I'm drinking a hundred and I'm driving to Vegas or I'm going somewhere crazy. On the crazy. way, I'm driving through the house you're in <laughs> and then driving. I, I one time woke up at the Hoover Dam in a blackout. I didn't know how I got there. Right. My car was there. I was there. And I was like, how the fuck did I get here? Like, that was my drinking. I didn't drink normal. So you don't just see me drinking one beer. Right. Did yeah, I'm going to drink a bottle of vodka. So like, on those things, though, would they, like, egg the fight on the production crew? No. They would just give so much alcohol, turn down the air so it's fucking right. hot. And so you just, like, you want to kill someone? I didn't drink, so these bitches are getting stupid. So I'm yeah, just like. It's so hard to be around, you know, because you're just like, you are dumb as fuck. You're like, yes. you don't even know. Like, <laughs> I know. It's super. But listen. So those fights were, I have, okay, look at, I had, I didn't ever really watch the show, mm -hmm. but you know what I used to do mm -hmm. just to see what you're doing? The YouTube. I'd clips and yep. I'd get the 50 clips Yep. and then just see you just fucking losing it. I lost like it because fighting. I was like, they wouldn't let us go home until we fought. So we're like, by, by 
season five, six, we were like, okay, who's fighting? Who's next? Right. Like, it, we couldn't go home until we had a fight. It was so dumb. We had to think about how we were going to end up doing it. Oh, my God. It was stupid. And it, a lot of it was authentic because, you know, they would bring it on. It was stupid and stupid fights. Um, but, yeah, the production always egged, us, egged people on, especially the dumb ones. I'm not right. saying it out loud. But, you know. And then. But it did give me a platform because oh, yeah, I've sure. been public speaking. I've been motivational public speaking for over 20 years. Okay. Before I was a parent coordinator, uh, I was chair member in Little People of America, and um, like in my twenties, right? And that's what started me public speaking. And then I just went with it, and I kept on doing it. So when the show came, I did it once in a while. I would do big ones, like I did Life Is Beautiful. I did a lot, right? And uh, and it just kept it going. So what the show gave me, even though I was uh, not just a headache. And broke, marriage, a divorce, and completely broke. Um, it 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 gave me a platform to do what I love. Right. It's uh the thing too. So like, when you public speak, mm -hmm. um, were you? Because the thing that always like shook me about you is like, you might you might physically look small but if you hang out with you for like one hour you completely forget you know what i mean like if i you, forget i'm a little person all the time yeah no i guarantee i, I do could tell. i i always i was raised with right. average size family yeah i i used to run when i saw a little person i would fucking run i didn't want to see it i didn't want to look i didn't want to see right and then i end up having my own and I, i'll still stare at my kids going god they're little <laughs> like right. i it's just it is what it is i shock myself i'm like oh my god like, so I that's look at not pictures. something you had to learn no i look i still to the day look at pictures and go oh my god i'm a dwarf like it just it's yeah. so weird i, I don't know how, if i i can't explain it it's funny because when you say it i notice but yeah if you don't i have i don't know and like even when, like, if my friends are like, <laughs> I'm just like, what? Like, what? Like, you know what I mean? And I know that, like, any any time that you've been, like, in a room with you for, like, an hour, you just, it doesn't, it's not like, it's not you a don't thing know. Anymore, yeah, it's right? not a thing at all. Because I don't ever remember you ever I always saying, do, like, an open in line when I'm, I go, like, in public speaking different things. Right. It's usually in my first paragraph where I mention it so people can start breathing and laughing because right. they're just like at that shock value when I walk into the stage. Right. And I'll usually say something. I'll say a bit about, and I might even crack a joke and roast myself and they start laughing and I'm like, it's fine. Yeah. And then too, I guarantee like, I mean, I never heard your public speaking pitch, but it's like, There's I bet the room too, it, it starts to be like, oh, like you don't even... I bet you anything it is at first, huh? At a first. A shock? So, How much so, is the most people in the room? Um, Probably 500. Wow. See, no, you no, know, no. Life is Beautiful was huge. I don't know. Like the Life is Beautiful, the event in Las Vegas? Yeah. What did you speak on? Um, like on one of the fucking stages? Yeah. The main stages? Mm -hmm. Wow. That is fucking huge. I look different. I was like much bigger back then. Really? You just went for it. I love it. It gives me... I love the energy when you get on the stage. Right. But my, the best thing is, like, when I... The last public speaking gig I had, mm -hmm. it was in Mobile, uh, Alabama. And um, I had... I did my opening spiel. But by the end of it, I was talking about loss and love and blah, blah, blah. I had people crying. Right. Grown men. Grown men crying. Yeah. And that, it, when you could do that, you know you've done your job. When yeah. you could touch, go in there and reach their heart and pull on some strings. See, I feel like, too, though. Make an impact. When a lot, like, when people, I mean, the biggest thing, like, think about this, too. Think about like you're just like a new business owner, mm -hmm. and and uh, cause I a lot of those guys like those Fortune 500 guys, you probably those young entrepreneurs. I that's what I just that's 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 what I did. Those it was, guys. It was a room full of Fortune 500. Yeah, and those guys they always are looking for the like 
the story, like the, the journey. The next, they like to hear the journey, yeah. especially the rich people who never had it. Yeah. Because they're like, they get it only when it comes to business. So when they make those bad decisions or they make like those spend the money un, like unwise and like take those risks. I mean, mm-hmm. that's like you are explaining to them the process of taking risk. Yeah. And that's like what they're depicting. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the more master, uh, masterfully, masterfully you can explain it, obviously. You always want to have a subject but and then veer off and tell a story and then go back to the subject. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, so your thing too is like you started out. What's the first movie you're in? With Robin Williams, was it? Or oh no? yeah, probably. I think that was it. I feel like you told me that before. Death the Smoochie? Is that what it was? Yeah. Was that the first one? I think so. That I was a big movie. IMDb. I forgot. That's a good ass movie too. I, I have to look at my IMDb. You gotta but look I think at so. it. And then how? So my IMDb is Chrissy McGinnity. Is that not your last name now? It is. Okay. I'm keeping it. That's a good Never last name. It. Mine's O'Connell. Um, it's a good ass name. We're right. both. Wait, wait. What is O'Connell? It's I'm Irish. Irish. I'm Irish. McGinnity. Yeah. I feel like we're um, what they call like the um, Black Irish. We are Black right. Irish. Yeah. Northern. So, Ireland. I don't even know if that's politically correct. If it isn't. It is. Okay. Is it? Yes. Well, maybe um, back in the day, maybe not now. Here's I don't... the thing, though. So, like, and that's the journey. So, it's like, what is it like? Like, what is it like, like, going into these things and, like, locking that role and then pursuing it? For... This is not the most fruitful industry. For which, which like one? Like, going Death of Smoochie. Oh, I, I wanted to be a doctor. I had a I had a ride at UCLA, but I got pregnant with Trent. So I went into the industry because I lived in Burbank. It right. was easy. So I did like commercials and movies and this and that and TV shows and How many? Just look at my MTV. And I don't have all of them. Look names. at it, guys. I don't have all of it in there because some of the bullshit stuff. I know most of it they don't even put in there. Yeah, I don't have it all in there. And then a lot of stage like I did Philharmonic, I did uh, Christmas Spectacular with the Rockettes. Right. I did a lot. And then doing that, did like your manage, did you manage yourself all the time? Yeah. And forever until? Yeah, till Little, Little Women in LA? And then people like come out with their hands open. Right. Once you're making a lot of money, they want a people, everyone wants a piece of you. Right. So getting on to Limit, Little Women LA, how did that even go about? Was that a- It was like all of us girls went to lunch and they're like, we should do a pod, we should do, not a podcast, we should do a- um, Reality show. We should do a, no. <sighs> Why can't I think right now? It's end of the day. Um, a pilot. And by this time I was like, I've been on like five pilots. I don't want to be on a pilot. And I just finished filming a pilot and I thought that was gonna be picked up. And I'm like, I don't wanna do a fucking pilot. I just finished one. And they're like, well, let's just do like a sloppy pilot. And we did it at Tanya's house, a stupid like little handheld. Wow. And um, we pitched it and nine networks bid it on us. So So the other show was the guy and his son, right? What show? Little People. What do you a mean? A guy and his son? Didn't they have a show, another? I don't know. You don't remember if there's any other show like this before you guys did yours? There wasn't. There was none. Not like this. We're like a housewife show. There was like right, Little People right, Big huh? World. There's like the what Littlest was that? Couple. That's still running. It's the longest run Little People reality show. Is that one show. family? What? Is that one family? Mm-hmm. Wow. And they're all messed up. They're like... Yeah, but they're divorced and mingled and this and that and crazy Bravo, shit. Bravo, guys. I'm proud I mean, of you, little people, big world. Yes. Because I think that's the one that I remember. So now the son must be an adult. They're all adults. Right. The son, you know the twin? One of the twins, there was a little twin and an advertised twin. The little twin has three kids and oh I think another God. one on the way. You know them? You're friends with them? No. I like met them a of long course, time right? ago. Like Little People of America, which is a nonprofit organization. Right. And we have like once a year we have these conventions, which I probably will never fucking go ever again. Wow. I don't want to be a part of it. Sorry. Just, I'm done. 
I'm an advertised person. Right. Mentally. I'm just done. I've already married two little people. Don't want another one. Oh, Never man. again. I feel like they have Napoleon complexes. So this is both Todd and... <laughs> right? All of them. Like, all of them. I've been... No. No. Are you talking about everyone you've intimately been with, or... No, I'm just talking about... Every oh, single another. one? What are you talking about? Huh? What are you talking about? Like, every person? It's mostly you're just saying the people you've got to know on a deep... No, like, even... I love my son. I love you, Trent, if you watch, but you kind of... You kinda, know he's going to watch. You know, sometimes he has a Napoleon complex. You know, it's like, I'm tough. I must conquer. You know, yeah, like... I don't have that. That... Because he's short and he has to be tough. I'm very proud of him, though. He's an architect. He's married. He's happy. He's doing good. So, I mean, it must be a little hmm. hard hmm. growing up. You know what I mean? Little person? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe look at, for the look, I have to climb to get on a fucking couch, dude. I know, but listen. Like, I have you, to climb to get on a fucking toilet sometimes. So there, there's like that... Uh, that we were just talking about in the sociology day. Uh, my teacher goes, how many times does someone tell you to, you need to smile? Mm -hmm. I was like, never. <laughs> and then she asked this other guy, what about you? Um, not really. Asked these three other people, never. And I never realized this. And then she asked all the girls. Mm -hmm. And they're like, all the time. All the time. Resting bitch face. And I was like, what? And like, even, even the girls in our class were like, my mom tells me you need to always smile. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what if you're not happy? Mm -hmm. You know? Take it. And it's like, I always wonder, too, it's like, what would it be? I mean, because then it's like, you know, at what point do you start noticing is the difference? Is it at kindergarten? No, I knew right away. No, when does everyone start noticing the height and I kids knew start? Two. Really? Mm -hmm. So there's a visible difference? Yes. At two? Yeah, my and, kind of dwarfism. And, which and is do kids kind of notice it? Um, Were kids already like, you're different by the time they nope. could talk? I was in preschool at four, three, right. four, and I got made fun of in preschool. And is that, is this a normal, is yes. this that the story for everyone usually? Yes. Yeah, so it's like, I mean, yes. you got to give it to someone though to, it's a lot of extra work. You, to, to live a life to ha you have to explain every day why you are short. Right. Yeah. So it's you, patient. So you got to, I mean, you have to give it to the men. Okay, maybe they're not for you. And maybe the guys that you were married to could be like, you know, I know both of them. They're both interesting human beings. Um, I don't know a lot of people like... I wasn't married to the last one. Right. But, yeah. But, you know... It's just that thing is like, it, it, but it goes. My longest relationship was an advertised person, though. Really? Mm-hmm. Do I know the guy? Brian. He had short brown hair. Mm-hmm. I met him. He was my longest relationship. He was pretty good looking, like a Tom Cruise looking yeah, guy. Yeah, he was. Right. If you're watching, Brian. I miss you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh. I do. You don't talk to him anymore. No, I talk to him. He's sober now. He's just sober. And he's a newbie, and I was like, hey, how are you doing? He's like, don't say hey. I was like, okay. Right, see you later. <laughs> like, you know, he's like, stop flirting with me. I'm like, saying hey, he's not flirting. Right. I'm just saying, hey, how are you? How's life? How's your kid? How's your wife? Like, normal shit. Like, you were in my life for 10 years. I just wanted to know. Yeah. And, like, I guess him and his wife were split or something. I don't know. I was like, leaders. Yeah, it's... <sighs> But let me go back to this just real quickly. Mm -hmm. So, like, I mean, you, there, there's a little extra of growing up. You know what I mean? Like, it's, you go through this. You have to do a lot of work on yourself. I still to be do. The person. Yeah. Same here. It's this constant evolution. It's a of constant. Work. And then you, there's people that you see, like, they don't do any. Yeah. You know? And somehow, I, I how do you... And then, you have how to do you end up with those people, health? though? Shut up. Shut That's up. the only thing is that, you know, and, and this is no low blow at all. You're low blowing me. No, but I'm, and it's no I, low. Okay, it, okay, 
So I, I fall in love with the brain, not the looks. That's my problem. Like, I am more of a person that falls in love with the, the intellectual side of a person. And then I can overlook the looks if they're ugly. I know that sounds horrible. But that's how I perceive attraction. Like, I have to have an intellectual conversation. My last one, I got knocked up. And so it came into a different kind of, it, it happened a different way. Right. We were boyfriend, we weren't even boyfriend, girlfriend. We were just fucking, he was my best friend for 10, like a good friend for 10 years. And we got pregnant. And I didn't think I could get pregnant. Right. So. Ugh. So there's a lot of things that go, I mean, this, this goes couch for is any, so fluffy. It's a good couch. Uh, this couch looks. I'm amazing. like, do I sit up? Do I not? Do I, I wish it was oh, daytime branding. because it does look different. The nighttime edit of this couch, we'll see how it looks. I haven't done it yet. It's like a, it's like a yellowish it's mustard. Great. Right? Yeah. So it's like the two locations. This is the Vista podcast location. The other ones you guys recently seen, Ooh. which I've got a lot of like nice feedback on. People like the the new podcast studio. That's courtesy of a uh, NoHo Recovery. They bestowed that upon us, and God, that's it's so it's just such a nice studio. They have a new studio. I have a podcast. Yeah, so there's a where at North Hollywood. I know, but in, in the actual NoHo, uh, they have another location where they do all the so Macna. I didn't see it last time. I don't think we went to it. No. I'll take you there. So Macna does recording arts. He was a big rapper. Now he kind of like helps the guys that come in that want to flex. You know what I love about them. NoHo? recovery is that it's it's all in one like of most rehabs you go you get sober clean whatever you need to get done and you leave right here you you get the help you actually fucking need there's no judgment on how fast and how slow you go right. this progress not perfection i could have used a attitude like that. me yeah. too and then they get you a job like it's mind blowing yeah it is mind blowing it's mind blowing because the success rate has to be higher at a facility like that so that's see that's an interesting take too is what how these people consider something successful so cry help has this success rate on people completing now this is no knock into cry help Cryhelp is amazing. I I love Cryhelp. Do you not like it? I'm not saying anything. Okay. My cousin works there. No, I just had a hard time there. They have great people now. It's okay. So I had to do detox there, and it ended up in the hospital because my detox was too insane. Right. So, but let's look at this. So when you talk about success rate, a lot of people su successfully complete their 30-day program a lot of people have successfully complete their 60 day, right? And then, but what is success? You know what I mean? So like, not to, to say anything like negative about uh, CryHelp because it's a different kind of program. So like, I'm leaning towards uh, more towards in the future creating programs more like NoHo Recovery where there's not this huge, I don't like the idea of uh, like, you, if you relapse, you start over. There is that vibe, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and I know that we have this like... So I agree with you, but I don't talk about it too much because people are against that. But becoming a recovery coach, that's the way you learn. You There's different aspects in sobriety. And right. There's different ways in getting sober, not just AA. Not AA is not for every right, fucking yeah. person. No, it's definitely not. And Sorry for the people that are crazy AA people or 12 steps. I respect you. I love you. It saved my life, but it's not for every single human. Because right. honestly, I think what's kept me sober this long is going through that schooling. See, so like me, mine is 100% the steps. No, I'm, not just the yeah. steps. The steps, I'm of talking course. about me. For me. The steps you have to do, though. Yeah. Like, it, you can't, 
I don't know. There's things though. So th this is the thing. I so still like, use steps every day though. When I when when I talk about too setting people up for like the success, it's like I want them to have like you need to have like the creative outlet. Yep. You need to have the work skills. Like you yep. need to know how to get a job. Yep. You need to like you have like you have to like build that life that is worth keeping your sobriety for. Yeah. And there is gonna be those obstacles. You know, Trust me, me, I have yeah, like I ha I fell a lot. And you know, as more than anyone, I was constantly in trying to, you know, trying to get it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And really, like, working really hard, doing the steps, getting this amount of time, going through rehab, staying there, this, this. But I just didn't, what I didn't get uh, when I was in a lot of the places is I concentrated, and I think a lot of places concentrate on this, is relapse prevention. Yep. So when I would go to 10 relapse prevention classes a week, and nothing like the work program that I do or nothing like, you know, they had like a acupuncture there. They had mm -hmm. meditation, but I mean the breath work. So like, it's one thing to like meditate in a room and go, um, or listen. There's so many different kinds of meditation. I, me. There's breath work meditation. Oh yeah, I love That's it. That's my fave. Johnny was just on the, the last episode. Nice. And he's amazing. But, uh. I need to know why I'm doing, you know what I mean? Like, I needed to know why. So just to, like, go in the, the meditation class, then hit a guided meditation. Yep. Or start the music and tell you to start. Yep. Like, I just needed a, I needed a deeper understanding. Like, I needed yeah. a deeper understanding on a lot of the it things. It really helps, though. Like, I really oh, yeah. feel this, it, when you do it in the morning and you ground yourself, I like to go outside and ground myself. Right. And do it in the morning and go outside and meditate. It's and you hear the birds and and everything. I just it's it's everything. If I skip a day, I do not feel right. Hold on, let me stop it right here. Make sure. Mm -hmm. Saying so like to do so like to do relapse prevention, relapse prevention, and then yeah, like the one meditation, the one acupuncture. And I, this goes just like, all, you know, so if you have the acupuncture, awesome. It's great. It actually is. I think it helps. Um, it's like an extra tool in the toolbox. You do the suction cup, right? This? Yeah. The suction oh, cup. Oh, I do that through, um, I don't, do, I don't, I've never done that rehab. Oh, okay. I do do that. Cupping. I know you do. I always see your, your post. Yeah, though, so, but. You don't implement that in your. That's rehab? just for recovery from working out. Okay. Um. But like what I was gonna say is that emphasis on relapse prevention is like this big thing. Like don't relapse. We just don't want you to relapse. Just don't do it. Yes. It's just it's a little much because it just puts. Or this you big, might die. They're really. I don't know. You really can die now, and that's a serious. The, well, the sad thing is, is that you don't know what's in things anymore. Like right. And the whole fentanyl thing is horrible. Yeah. It is. I My mean, phone's going off like crazy. There's a. Sorry. The emphasis, though, on relapse prevention is it's like you leave, and it's like, I, I just feel like that's with a lot of the rehabs, and maybe I just wasn't ready to listen. But, like, in my opinion, is when I'm doing groups, I'm actually talking to a normally a group of people who don't want to listen. You know what I mean? They're, Not the last class I went. No, that's what I'm saying, but that's changed. Yeah. So the first class, those are the same kids. Same they kids. They were sleeping when I was doing it. They were telling uh -huh. me, why are you talking about this? I mean, it's a di it's changed now because they know. They per they got to know you personally. They got to know me personally, and I'm, I'm offering them valuable information. You know what I mean? So if I bust open a, a the Gottman's guide to this or bust our worksheets from these and indeed the worksheets are good and it's all i mean it's how you facilitate it i mean my thing does have worksheets too you know um but it's like you gotta like you gotta there's gotta be a connection and i really have to be telling you something for from facts that i know like yesterday i uh i, had, I was working last night and i needed a Forklift certification, so I went online. Oh, I saw that. And I got one. I, I saw that. Why do you need a forklift 
certification. I was doing a Hana Fest. So Stevie Nicks is playing on Friday. Okay. I went to go, you know, I used to do that stuff. I, I was like, why does he need this? He's do you want to know why, though? Do you want to know why I did it? Because they make good money. They're like they, 50 bucks an hour. They do, but also, though, because now I can tell them, no, I actually know from experience that if yeah. you go on to this thing and you get this certification, uh -huh. you'll have it in the same day, and I know that you can turn it you in. You did it in the same the day? The same day. And I gave it to the supervisor of the company. You, prob was, you probably will never use a forklift, but you have it, right? I did yesterday. You did? Yeah. Was it scary? No. I've, I mean, I've used them before. Oh. Yeah. But this guy yesterday freaking was like a total fucking dick face that worked there. <laughs> They're going to edit this, that. I'm not going to edit this. Fuck that guy from fucking <laughs> Kleeg or whatever the fuck he's from. Dude, like, go... Go fucking have a Xanax, bro. <laughs> like, dude. He doesn't mean that. You better Anyways, not say that. No, he. this guy doesn't. He's not sober. He was probably on cocaine yesterday. But anyways, I mean, it's like, that's why I did it, though, is I wanted to be like, you could get this today and work tonight. Cause so you're that's a good how I example. Like, well, I just don't like to say things I don't know. So I've been actually talking... I've been telling people, you should get this forklift certification. You can get it on this thing. But I was they like... They weren't doing it, so now you can... So now I can come back so tomorrow. So tomorrow, when you go there, you're going to I'm going to show them, of course. Look, kids. Yeah, I'm forklift certified, class yeah. C. Yeah. You know? It's rad. Right. And that, and that, but that's why. So, like, my class is effective because of that. So there, it's like you need, in my opinion, um, you need that balance, too, of, like people who understand the psychology behind addiction. But I really think that that, that should be fed to people like us that have the lived experience. Mm -hmm. So now I am in the school, I'm in the process of now learning more and more and more and more. And, and I'm gonna be like at that same level of like those doctors in, in that play, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm not stopping till I have a doctrine. And why am I not gonna stop till I have a doctrine? Cause I have nothing but time. Like, I'm able to work 40 hours a week. I'm able to do this podcast. I'm able to go to school. I'm able to get straight A's. I'm able to take care of my son. I'm able to be a good partner. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, like, the time is there, and mm -hmm. that's what I'll do with it, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just, like, that's why um, when someone like me or you facilitates a group, it's effective. Yep. There's a huge difference between sitting in a group and someone's telling you why you shouldn't use or why you shouldn't mm -hmm. drink because they read it in this book and these are the things, these are the steps you can do to, it's just, is is it's, that is, I mean, that's real knowledge. It's in this book. There's, there's a lot of facts that are true in these mm -hmm. things, but I mean, the reality of when you want to drink and taking a drink I mean, it's, you're not gonna you're not gonna put a lot in between it when you're first sober. Yep. You know what I mean? But, but then, now, when you're this many years, you're like, I don't want to start over. Right. I mean, yeah. and that, and especially too, so like someone like us, like we talked earlier, we're crashing the car through the house <laughs> to go to Tijuana or wherever, <laughs> and then waking up in a trash can somewhere. <laughs> With like with some other stuff. Yeah, with some guy's shirt. <laughs> or like me, like in a bikini. Or, you know what I mean? Or Dead no. ass. Oh my god. This one time. Okay, so like I don't know what happened to this guy. Travis McGill. This one time they drove me to my freaking grandma's pants and like or house in like a women's pants and like a women's top and just dropped me in. Like I just like fell like like in the door, like <laughs> boom, like into her house. And then it's laid out right there. And that's like one of like... That's like, that's like basic. And that's, that's every basic. night. Yeah, that, dude, that, that was like a good night. You know that what I mean? That was a good night. Oh, I did right. some stupid shit. I, oh, dude, dude, dude. Mm -mm. So it's just imagine. Mm -mm. And that's why too, like, <laughs> when, when people ask me now, like, did, did that make you think about using it's like maybe, but like <laughs> I know the reality. You're you're gonna, yeah. And no, like, dude, my life is. It's like, and my life is so amazing that it's like, yeah. No, and even the bad time, like, you mm -hmm. know, even that grief period. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so what did I learn from the grief period? Yeah. Is like, I was like, th th you know, I'm safe. 
Yep. Like I have somewhere to live. Like I'm like I'm your, okay. Your feet are on the ground. on the ground. Yeah. That was the only so like what I was able to do you is had a like yeah. Your head, you had food. And I it was like I'm here now. And then lay uh -huh. down and be depressed. Uh -huh. But that depression didn't go into that deep, deep dark like, hole. Dark like, darkness where you're doing stupid shit. And... Or where I'm like, I need a break from this. Yep. Like, at least now, I, I, I've come to learn that, like, getting to the other side of those things, that's the beautiful part. It is. Is not getting stuck in that middle and, and reverting back and starting over. Because, like, I, I've, I've also learned, and I, you know, I don't know if this is every addict, but I've learned to get comfortable in that starting over. I know you like it, too. I did in the beginning, but it's been 12, almost 13 years. But you have no fear. I'm not talking about drinking or using. Oh. Because like, I'm just, like, doing something new. Like, we're just... No, I, I love mean, new stuff. And we're built for it. I, I love meeting new people, trying new food. I'm Being adventurous. Way. Oh my God, especially the food. Yep. But uh, I yeah. mean, that. But that's the thing too, and it and it's like uh, there's an old. There's an old saying, and it's uh, my quote <laughs> from We Sing, which is "Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver, and the other is gold." That's one of my favorite quotes from. Do you remember that? We sing. No. No. We what? sing together. No. Those show like, it was like for kids, like babies, like it was a we sing. But you're younger than me. But so like maybe, but how old's your son? You're not that right. younger than How old me. is he though? He's 25. All right. That shit was gone by the time he is. So... You're 38? Yep. Yeah. That's old. You're not old. It's a, it's a good old, though, at this age. I, I just still can't believe I'm 45. I'm fighting the, I'm fighting the age, though. Like, it's, it's different now. Like, I feel better than I ever have before. I feel like I can conquer the world. I cannot wait to wear a two-piece. I haven't worn one since I was 17. And now it's going to be winter. I know, but next summer I'll be able to wear a two-piece. You got to keep it up. Dude, oh, yeah. I am. I need to work on my legs. Because since the surgery, my legs have gotten really weak. So I really start need to work on my legs and my arms. Is there a specific trainer that you would use for that? Or just... Bro, look at my torso. It's an African-sized torso. But what about legs? Leg legs days. and arms, that's it. But what would you do for leg days? You have the workouts? No, but I do like squats, I okay. like mass squats with some weights. Right. No, uh, you don't ever do the one, the squats with the big bar behind you? No, I need a spotter. What about deadlifts? I could do that. You've done it? I used to do weight training. I need, I want to go back to the gym. As soon as I get the okay from my doctor, I had a, I had a whole form. I did a mommy makeover in my belly and I'm getting these done soon. What's this guy's name? Dr. K. Is he the best? He's the best. And I was awake the whole time. Where was it at again? It was in Long Beach. Long Beach. Yeah. I was awake the whole damn time. I think I might get one. Why don't you come with me? I have to I go gotta see talk him. To him. Last time he was too in a hurry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, what happened? Do you, I heard what happened. What? The surgery tech never showed up. So his wife had to scrub in because she's an RN. Really? Mm hmm so they were pissed that day, anyways? They were frantic. Frustrated. F frust frantic. Frantic, frustrated. Right. And then the nurses had to stay late because everything slowed down. So all the nurses stayed. They put everyone in lockdown and made them work overtime. So, And we came in. We walked into that chaos. Right. So... But he's, they called me up. We're like, we're so sorry. We didn't mean to be all crazy. And... Our surgery person didn't show up. I was like, oh, my God, what did you do? Right. They and made it happen anyway. They made it happen. She's an R she's a surgery RN, so she just, I think, scrubbed in and did it. So, How was that? Being awake? Yeah. It was rad. 
I enjoyed every moment, but I'm weird. You so. know, but I actually watched on his uh, Instagram of them. Did you watch on my Instagram? Like my stomach oh, being no. completely See, this, opened I up. I do not do that. I do Why? Not do, I already told you. I don't like the watch, blood. It's not no, that no, no, much no. blood. I'm not going to watch. There's no way. Listen, because I, okay, so. Dude, you guys, so when I showed him like my scar the other day, like he that. like ran. I tried to show him my belly button because it's still all crusty no. and bloody. <laughs> <laughs> It's still bloody, you want to see? No, no, no. Don't take it out. <laughs> Listen, the thing is, so I, I watched I watched the guys. See, and I don't I never watch that shit. Like it, I hate that stuff. I watched him take that whatever and just ramming it into someone's stomach and they were laughing. Yeah, it was funny. So Oh my god. Do you know I was expecting a lot of fat to come out of me, and do you know there was only this much fat? Like that. Where's the much. rest skin? The all of it was skin. I bet that's like me. It was no fat. He's like, you had really fucking because it hurt me. He's like, it will you if you if it if you laugh, it means that's fat. When it hurts, that means it's muscle. So he was going like this, and I'm like, okay, all right, because I I wanted when he went here, here, I wanted him to get because I didn't want him to stop here. Right. I wanted him to get here because I hate when you see people that get their stomach oh, done. And they still got the it's bulge. Like a, yeah. It's like a tiny little bulge. I wanted all is of that, that gone? gone. Yeah. Look how That's small my I, waist is. I mean, it's small. Yeah. That's what I want gone. Is that I have. And I have that. layers on. I have like compressions. Right. I like. It's crazy. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna hop. <laughs> um. So, and then healing time. I thought it was a week. It's practically a month. A month? All right. No, I mean, you saw me. I went out to dinner. I, did. I did stuff. You um, did a way too much, in my opinion, that day. Thanks. And then, um, but thanks. you know what? Um, I told him, like, hey, I'm, an al I'm a recovering alcoholic. Right. So he prescribed me. I didn't know there was such a thing. Um, a, um, a muscle relaxer. That's like non addicted and to make me tired. Ultram? So I don't know what it's called, but he, it was like, it was such a relief to know that he was so sensitive to that. Right. Like the first two days, I did have to take a narcotic because it is, it's intense pain. Right. It's not a C section, it's right. like all the way, all, almost to the back. So it's like all the way to here. Yeah. There's like only like four inches that's not cut. Damn. I know. You know what, though? It is good. So, and you like, took that much skin off you know what all I wanna, the way around. I wanna, touching on that, so I, uh, I'd say like nine months ago, had this stomach problem. And motherfuckers, I would tell them that I'm an addict. And every time they would try and prescribe me fucking uh, Norcos. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dude. Norcos make me so sick. I'm, I, I'm like, I just don't take, you know what I mean? Like, that yeah. shit's crazy. It is good to have someone who... Like, so the doctor, these. though, like, he, I had to be on that stuff for two days, right. three days. No, three days. Because the third day is the hardest day. And it constipated me right. so bad. I had to go and get help for that. Wow. I was impacted. Jeez. It was awful. I mean, they had to go and uh, dig it out. The, the narcotics constipate you. Yeah, and I had to get help. And it. I was so impacted of suppository didn't work and then an enema didn't work so i someone had to go in with a glove and pull it out it was awful you literally just said to edit that and then you just said the same thing do you know i didn't tell you who said? did though i didn't say who did it so we're not we're keeping that out oh my god yeah but so the most important part to keep out is who did it yeah mm -hmm. Shit happens. Right. Everybody shits. And when you go through surgery and you have to take that stamp damn stuff. Was it a male or female? I, shut the heck up. Just, it was a female. That's not, at least it, right? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, small It'd little hand. More... You know, like a little oh, small. Oh, really? You found a small little hand? No, it was a, she has a small hand. Smaller than yours? No. I have a baby hand. Like, I have a. Right. The, I, that's why I always wear nails, but I don't have nails right now. So I'm like, eh. I gotta get them on before my meeting on Saturday. Small hand goes up, pull it out. I gotta do that to myself too before. It's awful. Heroin act, you know what I mean? Heroin, yeah. Yeah. 
Same Maybe shit. more people have to do that, and they just don't talk about it. Yeah. You're you're making it. You know what I mean? Now these I, I'm are... already naturally constipated, like all the time. I think wow. it's because From of my what? suede back. What do you eat? I eat protein. Fiber. Eat too much. No, I now I'm taking. I make. I take uh, fiber uh, pill or uh, gummies. Right. Um, I do two to three a day, but um, because I drink protein shakes and protein bars, um, all the time. Like it's my lifeline nice is there anything you want to promote on here <laughs> so i'm starting a new meetup here in san diego i think it's going to be in oceanside it could be carlsbad i'm looking for a location so stay tuned for my meetup because it's for um empowering people and giving them you know good lessons and um yeah there's going to be a lot of good people there too and speakers so, yeah. So look out for that, Oceanside. If you're listening to this part. Oh, follow you, me too. Yeah, you at know. At Little Chrissy Rocks. So it's at Little Chrissy Rocks, which. L-I-L-C-H-R-I-S-T-Y-R-O-C-K-S. And if you're watching, it'll be down here mm -hmm. in the description too. Mm -hmm. And also, if you know a location in Oceanside that would want to host this event that Christy's taking Every, Once doing. a week. It has to be once a week at night. I was preferably Monday or Tuesday. So, um, is Monday football? I have no clue. I mean, there is Monday night football. Shit. But when that Tuesday. starts, I don't know. Like, it's already You're safe started. on a Tuesday. What? I'm safe on a Tuesday, but Monday, usually restaurants are dead, so they don't mind you taking a room. Well, there's no football, is what you're saying? Oh, you're right. So I better do Tuesday. Right. If you got football going, then especially here. Oh, everyone, yeah. Everybody's. Football. So at Little Christy Rocks. Uh -huh. We spelled it. It'll be down here. If you're uh, listening on Apple and everything, I'll put it in the description when you Thank click you. the listen. And uh, this, you know, so we there's going to be some reoccurring guests. Christy will be one of them. Uh -huh. So we'll keep you up to date on when these things happen and uh thank you guys so much for watching you can support this podcast at younggods.mf sorry younggodsmfg.com there's a trash can talk uh hoodies t-shirts um crew necks tank tops there's women's so we got every single thing every single shirt you want and you can pick up young gods merch that supports our podcast. They're our main supporter. Thank you guys so much for watching.